I'm going back to Vietnam. Actually, I'm going to unbox Fall of Saigon, 1972 to 1975. This is an expansion for Fire in the Lake. What is Fire in the Lake? Well, it is this game here, Fire in the Lake, Insurgency in Vietnam. It's a game designed by Mark Herman and Volko Runke, who is actually the uh, original creator of the coin series. This is a coin game. This was volume four in the series, and coin stands for, stands for counterinsurgency and deals with asymmetrical uh, powers or asymmetrical abilities and victory conditions and um, different actions that each one of these factions will take uh, during a turn. It traditionally is dealing with four factions. Most of the games deal with four factions. Uh, Fire in the Lake deals with four factions. It's the United States, it's the South Vietnam, it's the North Vietnam, and then the um, Viet Cong. And uh, however, there are some games in the series that have you know, been flexible with that number, including I think there's, there's, a, there's a two player one dealing with uh, the conflict in Algeria in the um, in the 50s. So you're saying, well, this is counterinsurgency. Why is the Vietnam War uh, covered in a counterinsurgency game? Well, there's a lot of elements of the Vietnam War that fit uh, very nicely into the same elements that you would find in a counterinsurgency. So uh, in order to play Fall of Saigon, you're going to need Fire in the Lake. So what Fire in the Lake dealt with, it dealt with uh, the Vietnam War from 1964 to 1972 when there was the Paris uh, Peace that uh, was instituted. What Fall of Saigon does, it takes the game beyond that. So now you can play all the way up to 75 uh, where, <laughs> hence the name, Fall, where, where Saigon fell, the fall of Saigon. Uh, so you're going to need Fire in the Lake to play this game or to, ha to, to use this expansion. Um, so let's take a look at the back of the box and let's see what comes in this expansion. Again, it's going to have uh, enough uh, uh, of cards and other uh, elements or, or to play the game all the way up to 1975. If you're not familiar with the coin game, the, the coin game is driven by cards. It's very much a, a, a card-driven game in, 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 in a lot of respects in that the cards are, are gonna tell you what, uh, who's, you know, this, uh, who can go on a turn, and then you're gonna make decisions based on the, the unique and asymmetrical actions that each of the factions have to play your turn. So, I mean, the actions are not based on the cards, but the cards are gonna dictate a lot of the activity. Plus there are events on the cards, and a lot of times you're choosing those events because they're they very well be, may be more powerful than the actions that you have uh, available to you. Um, so what you're going to get, I mean, this is a big box. Why do you have such a big box for an expansion? Well, there's more components in this box. One thing that, that this uh, uh, expansion adds is armor units, which, you know, again, this is a cube game, so don't get too excited. They're just bigger blocks of, of uh, wood. But in the, the game contents, you're gonna get 79 event cards and 25 solo cards, 21 wooden pieces, one full color counter sheet, 10 player aid cards a rule booklet, a play booklet, and a solitaire rule booklet. Um, complexity is a five and solitaire suitability is nine because there is a separate bot in here or, or, or AI or solo system in here. Now, COIN originally started out with um, having flow charts that, for the bot. So you would, you, you would pick one of the sides or one of the factions, and then the other three factions, there were flow charts that guided your actions or you made decisions, uh, decision trees to, to figure out what the uh, other factions would do. In Fire in the Lake, uh, uh, after Fire in the Lake came out, they actually came out with uh, one of the games, I think it was the, the, the Indian Independence game uh, with Gandhi, uh, they came out with a separate card bot or card solo system and they took that same card system and came out with a trung. I'm probably mispronouncing it, so apologies. But this is, a, they kind of replaced the, the flow chart system and they had a card system uh, to use for fire in the lake. I think they've done the same thing here. Instead of just updating trung, I think they came up with a, a card system 
for the expansion if you're playing from 72 to 75. I believe that's the case, uh, could be wrong, but I know that there is a, a separate solo system in here as you can see from the uh, back of the box. So let's get in this box. Um, and again, if I didn't say it already, this is published by GMT Games and GMT uh, Games was kind enough to send me this copy, so I wanna thank them for this. Uh, I, I, I really like uh, uh, Fire in the Lake. I have several of the coin games. I have like uh, six, maybe seven of them. Uh, this is a, an excellent game. Uh, it's a different look at Vietnam. Uh, there's other strategic level or operational Vietnam games out there. Uh, this one has a very unique look to, uh, uh, or perspective uh, as it uh, man or simulates that conflict. So very, uh, very interesting game. And I, I'm, I'm happy to get this expansion to take the Vietnam War to its conclusion or take it all the way up to 75. Um, one of the things from a history's perspective, you know, after the peace, uh, 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 the Paris peace of, of 72, uh, there's going to be kind of a negotiated withdrawal of the United States. So the United States is going to have much less of an influence uh, on the on the map and it's going to be more uh, handing it over to the South Vietnamese to to uh, keep the struggle uh, uh, continuing. So. Uh, in this game, I think really addresses that or, or tries to simulate that in its um, in its uh, rules and the new cards that that comes in this um, expansion. So you're going to get a playbook here, which is has an example of play, has a solitaire example. It talks about some strategy, uh, both a card selection strategy and an armor strategy. Um, Black April strategy, it has event text, tips, and background. Then you have some designer notes and developer notes. So this playbook is kind of more of a, of a how to play with some supplemental information about strategy in there. It's a dual column. You know, you've got some, uh, again, it has a, as a, as an example of play in there. And it is, you know, standard GMT fair in that with its color, dual column and it is 35 pages long which is some credits and photo credits on the back so you got 35 pages long of the playbook uh, then you're going to have this is the uh tay song i'm probably pronouncing that wrong but this is the uh solo uh system for that that's similar to the trunk system that came out uh, after fire in the lake to supplement the game so here is a, a card-based non-player rules and reference booklet. So this kind of talks about uh, how this, this is basically the solo system and talks about how to use the solo system. And here's the cards. Those cards are very similar that were, were in um, Trung uh, that came out for Fire in the Lake. Then there's, these are the actual expansion rules. Not very much that, well, I, I, I would be remiss how many pages is this. This is 20 pages and you have a chart here that helps you uh, that that's assist you in the uh, game for the solo for the solo game so and then you've got the actual expansion rules which are 12 pages so not very many expansion rules here again all you're, you're adding from 72 to 75 uh, in the cards that that go in there so this is probably mainly talking about the cards that go in here. Also, it looks like there's a, a, a way to play this two player as I said before the Algeria um, conflict or the Algerian conflict, Colonial Twilight uh, had a two-player system and it, and it introduced this track here, this initiative track, which is a little bit different than the, the four-player track or the four-faction four track. There's a different way to do the decisions to uh, to allow the game to be played by two players, and so they've uh, added this same uh, element into into this expansion. So that's another addition here as well. Um, as I say, you have actions, you have special activities. Uh, if you're familiar with the coin system, that's all dealing with kind of their asymmetrical abilities. The Paris Peace Talks is a, 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 a big factor of this because that's something that, you know, kind of uh, began the end of, of the United States involvement. And so that's going to be simulated here. And there's some special rules that go to that as well. And there's different outcomes that could come uh, out of that. Um, victory, new terms index, and setup, and then you get the setup scenarios, 
and there you have it that is the rules 12 pages for this expansion um, and you have to have fire in the lake base game in order to play this expansion here's your uh, punch out here this is that initiative track for two player game this is the u.s posture this is dealing with like the paris uh probably this is affected by i don't know if this is part of the paris piece or if this is just where the united states posture is going to be because again they are phasing out at this stage you know from 72 forward Th th so this is dealing with that aspect of the the u.s involvement here's your extra counters that you get and so there's there's some markers that go along with the game and this is those markers or counters are two-sided then you have these uh charts that deal with and there's four of these here because you can play with four people but these are all the same and these are the different activities that i was talking about you have for the Viet Cong, here are their operations that they can choose and then there's special activities if they have the, the, some prerequisite uh, they can use uh, the special activities as well uh, and they usually tie off of of one of the, um, the the regular operations and so you have that for the Viet Cong you'll have that for the Republic of Vietnam you'll have that for the United States and then you're going to have that for North Vietnam so you're going to have four of these because you can play this up to four people and uh, but these are the different and unique and asymmetrical abilities of each of those factions. Then this is a chart that deals with the solo bot uh, or the solo rules. Uh, they call it Tay Song. And this is a player aid card to deal with that. And again, this is very similar to what came in the Trung expansion for Fire in the Lake. There's this, there's these new cards that you use, and then there, there's these charts that help you that help guide you through the sequence of what the AI will do or what the, what the other side will do in a, in a certain circumstance uh, there. And then it talks about some of the, um, this is the card play here, uh, or the, the reference to the different cards that come in this expansion and how those fit into the solo system. Uh, extended scenario, coup round here. Here's the Paris piece. So it looks like there's two of these cards here. So maybe this is just dealing with a two-player game possibly, but as I said, that Paris Peace Talks is a very integral part of this expansion and what and how it can change what how the game's played or, or how things are affected uh, by each of the uh, factions' uh, ability, but mainly the United States. It's gonna have a major effect on, on what, ha what the United States will do as far as influence in that area. You have the NPQ coup round instructions you have invent instructions here and it's like there's uh this is the two player one this is a four player scenario and then this is for two player so you've got different instructions for that and different ways that can be played here is the extended non-player aid for Taesong. again that's the solo system so you've got a special player aid for just that. And I guess that earlier one was dealing with maybe with a, uh, a two-player, I guess, even though it's a solo player. I have to read up on that. This one looks like it handles all the other factions, depending on who you're playing or as the solo player. Uh, it, it deals with the other factions there, which is very similar, to, as I said, to the, the Trung um, a bot. And here are those solo cards that come uh, in the game. That, that, that go with the, this is the Tay Song bot. Again, I'm butchering that, but uh, I'll get those open in a second here. And then here's the new cards that you get for the, um, for 72 to 75 to add into there. And then these are the new counters and those long counters there are the, uh, looks like in some games people would call those fleets or ships, but uh, those, that's the armor that's represented. Uh, that's added in this uh, game here. So uh, let's look at the uh, the cards that are added here uh, in this game. And so these are, the, again, um, I would think uh, Herman and Runke would say this isn't a card-driven game because you have asymmetrical abilities, but the cards f factor in very uh, heavily in the play of this game in that um, they're gonna tell you which faction, what card is up. There's always gonna be a card that's uh, active and then a card that's coming up and that's gonna tell you 
who's got first dibs on that card by each of the four different factions. But it also has, you know, events that can be used for one side or the other uh, that are favorable to that side. And so you might want to uh, one of your one of your actions might be to, to instead of doing an operation, you might just do the event. So. Uh, again, harkens back to the traditional card-driven games that do that a lot. So you get several new cards in here that are really tied into the 72 to 75 time frame. These coups go in there because that's going to create uh, a point where you're checking certain things on, on the map board. As you can see, there's no new map board in here. You're, you're going to have to use all the stuff from Fire in the Lake. And this is just additive, mostly the, the cards is the thing that it, this expansion adds. You're also going to get a new deck of this these uh, solo cards that, um, I, guess, I guess it's the Taesong uh, uh, bot or solo system. And th these are going to be telling you what to do per... Um, uh, per the faction. So when you're playing, like if you're playing against three uh, bots or three, uh, you're playing as one player against three other factions, you're going to be using these cards to, t to tell what what they're doing or what that faction will do. And these are kind of, you know, randomly picked out and then you follow the guides here. So this replaces the, the flow charts that came in the original uh, coin series. It came in uh, Fire in the Lake originally before they had the Trung Bot and then in some of the other uh, all, all the ones prior to probably, I think, Gandhi, they had the kind of the, the flow chart system, which is actually uh, kind of a go. You can trace that back to Labyrinth, the War on Terror, which is another Volko Runki design that had a, a solo system based on the flow charts. So this is what you get in a box of um, this is a little bit smaller. Don't know why that is the case. I have to read up on that. So. Um, the uh this is what you get in a box of fall of saigon quite a bit of quite a bit of paper there a lot of cards and this is mainly a card expansion but you get a whole new solo bot to go along with it as well but that is what you have in fall of saigon which is an expansion for fire in the lake um excellent system i'm excited to try to get this to the table and see how this does uh, to how it does change things up or how it changes this situation. Normally, you know, Fire in the Lake ended in 72. Now we can go all the way to 75. So again, thank you GMT Games for sending this to me. Appreciate it. Love to know any of your uh, thoughts on this. Do you like Fire in the Lake? Are you excited about Fall of Saigon? Have you had a chance to play this yet? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Is this a, a must have if, if you have Fire in the Lake? Um, uh, and what do you think about his gameplay? How, what do you think about the new solo bot or, or even the trunk bot for that? I'd just love to know any thoughts that you might have and have, start a dialogue. Anyway, thanks so much for stopping by. I know your time is precious, so any amount of time you spend is uh, greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, stopping by on my channel and listen to me uh, prattle on. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thank you, GMT Games, and thank you for stopping by. Have a good one. Thanks for watching!